Welcome back to Mock the Mock, where we take a look at someone else's mock draft. And I'm Mock it, giving you my views, thoughts, and opinions. And today we're looking at Bengal. He's got a pre-combine mock draft with the combine currently underway. Hey, putting out a lot of combine content. Currently got my day one risers and fallers go check that out but he's got a new mock so you know we gotta check it out but what's crackalacking it's your boy bro Shbo. just in case you did not know so go ahead become a bro and subscribe leave this video a thumbs up and as always let me know what you think in the comment section below i'm gonna move this so y'all get a better look of what's going on but uh yeah we got that video out and um tonight we have a walk the mock we're going to be doing a mock draft where you can join me and mock against me and other members of the community. If you want more information on that, you got to be a premium member. Go check that out. You could use my promo code, uh, mock the mock, all caps. Gets you some money. Well, it doesn't get you money, but it saves you money. But let's go ahead, get into what Bengal got going on here in this mock. All right, he takes Evan Neal with the first pick. I don't think anyone's really going to... No one should have a problem with this. Evan Neal, he's like, for some people, he's their top prospect. He's a top five prospect. The dude's good. You want to invest in Trevor Lawrence. Well, you get him some offensive line help, and you do that with Evan Neal. Let's see what he does for the Detroit Lions. Goes Aiden Hutchinson, gets the hometown boy. Aiden Hutchinson, for every for a lot of people, I don't want to say everyone, but for a lot of people, he is the top prospect in this class. He had a hell of a year. Detroit, you really just want to add talent. So they add talent in Aiden Hutchinson. The Houston Texans, another team that just wants to add talent, and they're going to do that via KT, Kayvon Thibodeau. Uh, I think this guy has the best tools of anyone in the edge class. Um, there's some questions about um, his maturity in question. I I don't have those questions. He's currently my top prospect. I like KT. KT's good. So, yeah, the Texans, they just add talent. KT's a wonderful addition there. I don't think anyone's going to really dispute the top three. Let's see what he does with the Jets. Almost. There we go. Icky Akem Ikwanu. For some people, this is OT1. Icky, man. Oh, I think he could he'd be a good addition, man. He'd be a good addition. I don't know what they want to do with George Fant. At the very least, you know you're getting a starter at the right guard spot. Or at least one of the guard spots. Well, right guard spot. Uh, Elijah Vera Tucker, he's the left guard. But maybe he is the uh Era parent, the guy to uh, relieve George Fant of his duties if they don't extend him. Uh, not that he's a free agent this season, but they have a few interesting cut targets and cut options. But yeah, no, nah, they go uh, icky. They invest in getting a fair evaluation of Zach Wilson. So I imagine he'll probably double up on receiver. Actually, I watched this beforehand. He might double here or he might go receiver. All right, let's see what he does with the Jets. Uh, Charles Cross? Charles Cross! The forgotten about offensive tackle in this class. Um, I honestly would put him on the same tier as Icky. I, I like Evan Neal a bit better than both Icky and Charles Cross, but Charles Cross, man, is... That's a good that's a good football player you are getting. You might question, does his experience in the air raid offense... Does it does it translate? Uh, it's not like they run a lot of NFL concepts in that type of offense. Uh, we you look at a guy like uh, Andre Dillard. How long will it take for Cross to get accustomed to that? Regardless, you're getting a great talent, a high end talent in Charles Cross. The guy was phenomenal this year. Just go watch the Alabama game, and then. For the Panthers, this is where I'm starting to, like, see some ground when it comes to, oh, I guess they, honestly, perhaps, maybe they go tackle instead of quarterback. Maybe they just go with, like, the top guy on their board. Maybe they don't, like, make this desperation play for quarterback. 
Uh, but in this, the tackles are gone, and he infects. Infects. Infects is that's a word. He goes quarterback. Malik Willis. Malik Willis. Uh, again, it's nothing we don't already know here at the combine. He, I say here like I'm there, but uh, here on NFL Network, <laughs> uh, he showed out in terms of the arm talent. We already knew he has oodles of arm talent. Uh, he's not doing any of the athletic drills, but you already, you already know the type of athlete Malik will assist. He, he was second in all of college football in terms of force missed tackles. Do you start it right away? No, you don't, but you got Sam Darnold there. Can you, and I, ah, I don't know. It's kind of a tricky predicament where I think a guy like Malik Willis could save Matt Rule's job after this season, seeing that they might have a down year with Sam Darnold at the helm, but you don't want to rush Malik Willis in there, but he has the type of talent that could be in a, of an elite quarterback status with the high end arm talent. Uh, he needs to get used to working inside a structure, inside a clean pocket. The decision making needs to be a lot better, but the arm talent is in fact there. So the New York Football Giants, you could double up on a maybe a Tyler Linderbaum. Oh, double up on that offensive line. They do. They want to get DJ some help. Do they do that here? The answer is. No. <laughs> they go with the best player on the board, Kyle Hamilton. Phenomenal, phenomenal prospect. Um, the question is, how high can he really go? Because he's not going to fall. I don't think he falls out of the top 10. You're going to question positional um, value when it comes to Kyle Hamilton. But like he's a guy that's so versatile. If you use him in that manner, then you're going to be Gucci. Kyle Hamilton, great prospect. And then I think he does something interesting for Atlanta here. He goes with Trayvon Waka. He, uh, this is a guy that's been floated out to have a big combine this week. Oh, excuse me, I just dusted. Oh, jeez. Oh, bad. But he's, everyone's expecting him to have a big combine. He's got great physical tools. Oh, oh, excuse me. I think he was six on Dane Brugler's big board. So it's going to be interesting where he exactly comes in at, especially when you got uh, you got a guy in like Jermaine Johnson who, who in terms of like his ceiling, not high, but – oh, excuse me, high floor. Jeez, Dustin sucks. Uh, then you got George Karloftis, uh, someone who you're like – his skill set translates well to success, but how high is that success because the physical tools – Aren't exactly great. Um, oh my goodness. Oh, geez, Louise, dude. Oh. Oh, geez. Why do you blow it? Why do you blow your nose in a tissue and then you have to look at it after? That's so weird. Weird observation, but I think I might be in the cornerback market because I know how much Dean Pease. Likes having good corners, leaving his corners on an island. He loves to blitz. So I think corner might be the option here. Uh, oh, my goodness. Oh, man, this Atlanta pick, I'm allergic to it. But especially with the top two corners, top three, depending on how you see it, like literally you get your pick of the gander when it comes to this corner class. Here you're kind of settling for the edge three. Oh, golly. All right, let's see if I'm allergic to Denver. What do you do for Denver? I can't recall. He goes, I think he goes Devin Lloyd. Devin Lloyd. Devin Lloyd's going to be interesting. I'm curious how he tests out. Um, Mainly so, because uh, I... I don't think he's going to, like, he's not going to be, like, he doesn't have this Micah Parsons athletic upside. But he is a guy that can line up at edge and, like, he can play edge if you need him to. I like that. He's a former safety prospect, so his coverage skills are a bit better than what people think. He's got incredible length. He's a sure tackler. Um, And in terms of his coverage skills, I more say, like, I, like his plays and coverage this past year, 
they were all like his interceptions were tipped balls, but he showed off some ball skills. That's what I really liked. So like a team with like feels like their whole linebacking core are free agents. I could see them maybe going in that area. Now I talked about the Jets. Uh, investing around Zach Wilson, and they do that with Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson, um, after yesterday's performances, might be back to my wide receiver one. It's real close uh, with Drake London, Traylon Burks. Even Chris Olave came out and showed out pretty well. Uh, Jameson Williams, obviously rehabbing the ACL, but he's got that rare start-stop ability in this class. But I think Garrett Wilson just translates well to the NFL. He's a phenomenal route runner he can win on all levels of the field i like what he can do after the catch so i like garrett wilson here all right i don't think he goes quarterback he invests at the uh corner position rather than quarterback uh because rumor is hey ron rivera he wants a guy that can come in and start immediately apparently um and that my guy is probably not in this class but Mont Gardner, uh, the talk is he. The, a lot of people view him as cornerback one at the combine. Because uh, Derek Stanley, it's no secret the dude's kind of an enigma at this point. I mean, if and honestly, if you're watching, you just kind of want to keep adding at that at the corner position. Probably one of, if not the most valuable position on defense. Uh, having a lot of guys that can play at a high level. You kind of want that there. You know, this is kind of the Bucks' philosophy where they kept swinging until they hit and some throwing stuff at the wall until something stuck. And Washington could, could be in the same boat here. Landing uh, William Jackson. They got uh, Ben St. Jews. They have Kendall Fuller. But, yeah, no, keep going until you get it right. I don't mind that. So, Ahmad Gardner, a guy that I think... Uh, Sounds like he'll test better than expected in the um, in like the uh, agility drills. He's got wonderful length, threw some mass on that body. He is the most uh, one of the most um, uh, I would I guess you would say battle tested press man coverage corners in this class. So yeah, and then the Minnesota Vikings they go Derek Stanley. The cornerback room sucks. Straight up. It sucks. I know it'd be fun to go elsewhere for the Vikings, but it just makes so much sense with literally corner probably being the best value on the board to go corner. You would really just be trying to do something different for the sake of being different if you're the Vikings. And then the Cleveland Browns go Jameson Williams. So... Uh, under he's a very underrated route runner. They did grab Anthony Schwartz, but Jameson Williams is more of a receiver while Schwartz is this track star trying to play receiver. So grabbing Williams, great value here. Sounds like he'll be back a lot sooner than people think. Um, he's already he's already training, you know, a few weeks after surgery. So pretty darn impressive. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens. They go David Ajabo. They um, reunite not only Owe, uh, Odafe Owe, with David Ajabo, former high school teammates, but he re reunites uh, Ojabo with, well, his former DC there at Michigan. So, again, Ajabo's a guy that it, he's going to go. Where he goes depends on how you view his what he can be because he's just not it right now. He's He really only saw significant snaps this season, and it was in like week five, so it was like you know you got a very raw prospect. Let's go ahead and jump ahead to both Eagles picks. So Trent McDuffie, who's I think going to test out very well here, a guy that's very fluent in coverages. A lot of people are sleeping on McDuffie. I'm a big fan of McDuffie. And then Jermaine Johnson, a guy that can honestly start now in the NFL at edge. I like how he uses his leverage. Uh, he's got better bend than you would expect for a guy that's more of this power rusher. He lit the senior ball on fire. So two good picks, I think. And then I believe this next pick is Trevor Pennon for the Chargers. 
It is. Trevor Penning. So they try to sure up that right side, whether he's playing guard or tackle uh, off the bat. Because Brian Bulaga, I think he's going to be a cap casualty. Uh, and they really have nothing on the right side for Justin Herbert. Uh, so it kind of makes sense. Kind of. Sort of. New Orleans Saints. I actually like this pick. Because... It really feels like I'm one of the uh, only few people that really like this cat at quarterback being Sam Howell. Sam Howell, I thought he looked reasonably good here uh, doing drills at the combine, throwing drills. He only partaked in the throwing drills. A lot of quarterbacks, a lot of the top quarterbacks only did throwing drills. But Sam Howell, man, like, I think he's a lot closer to being ready to start than like your Malik Willis, uh, maybe Desmond Ritter, I would say, is a bit more ready. They got they ran a bit more um, NFL concepts there at Cincinnati uh, while Sam Howell was like a very RPO-heavy scheme. But you really saw, I think, this year was impressive for me because he really had to put the team on his back. The team around him was not good. He kept them competitive. Um, he really like outside of Josh Downs didn't have really any go-to receivers and anyone really balling out at the position. So good on Sam Howe, man. He was viewed as a top 10 prospect going into this year. People sour on him because technically it was a down year compared to what we saw, but I think that's poppycock. What do we do here for the Eagles? Here, let me just jump ahead. Tyler Linderbaum. Yeah, you know, Linderbaum, how far can he fall? Listen, Linderbaum is a wonderful prospect. I love Linderbaum. Um, do you really let him fall if you're the Eagles? Oh, he doesn't really feel a need. It's like at some point, it's like, listen, it's just he's just a great, great value here. He's the top guy on my board currently um, when it comes to this pick. At some point, you just got to pull the trigger and be like, you know what? He's too good of a player to pass up on. So, I don't mind it. I like it. And then he goes, Kenny Pickett for Pittsburgh. Kenny, you're staying in Pittsburgh. I think ultimately he ends up going in the first round. The thing is, uh, I like him better in this area for teams that are ready to c compete. They think they have the pieces. They're just missing some steadiness at quarterback. I think he, he can be a top 15 guy if the situation around him is ideal. Um, Y'all kind of already know my reservations when it comes to Kenny Pickett. Why I probably won't take him in the first round. And it's just like, you just know you're not getting a guy that can, I think, I, I don't think it could be elite. That's just it. I just don't think it. And then we have the New England Patriots. This would be a good place for Chris Olave. But he goes Traylon Burks. Uh, Burks, combine, it didn't come to fruition as some of the other, uh, some, a lot of people just hyped it up to like, he's the next DK. He's the next Chase Claypool. He's going to test like AJ Brown. Oh my gosh, this is Debo Samuel incarnate. And he's just not, but he still, a guy for his size to move the way he does, still, man, I think is very, very valuable. And the Patriots might find some value in that there. Uh, I like Chris Olave here. I like Drake London here. I think Drake London just there's more more you can do with him uh, rather than Traylon Burks, who's really this mismatch nightmare when it comes to uh, when it comes to. Oh, hey Gojo! Oh wow, you brought in a big stick. Okay. But, like, uh, on certain routes, you know this guy is going to be feared. And then he goes pretty safe for the Raiders, which I like. Because this is a guy that I have as a top 20 prospect. And uh, Kenny and Drake, we'll go over Carl Loftus in a sack. But we know the offensive line is a big area of weakness for the Raiders. Kenny and Green, big pickup. George Carl Loftus going to the Cardinals. Carl Loftus, again, a guy that can... Uh, it, his skill set translates well to the NFL. It just does. It's just he doesn't have high-end physical traits. The bend, he's not bendy. The the arm length, 
it's not long. But he's a good edge setter. He has a lot of power. So grabbing him here when you have uh, like Chandler Jones as a free agent. I think it's wise. It's great value. It's a shame. I don't think he's testing out with the edge group here at uh, Indianapolis. But we'll see how he does on his pro day. And then I actually like what he does here for the Dallas Cowboys. He goes Drake London. Listen, rumor is, and I love that I actually put Amari Cooper on my uh, cap casualty video. He was on the thumbnail because uh, I was like, man, I think this guy could be a trade target just because how much cap space he frees up. And it, now it sounds like that he will not be a cowboy next year. Michael Gallup, good luck signing him. Like, Suddenly receiver becomes a need because they really have C.D. Lamb. They have Cedric Wilson. But then you got guys like uh, Noah Brown who hadn't seen the field a lot. Uh, Sammy Pahoko, who they drafted last season, who's – you hope you hope he he's a, he's a late-round guy you hope works out. So Drake London, man, I think he, co he comes in immediate starter. Drake London, smooth mover, good route runner, great size, huge catch radius. After the catch, kind of good. Like, I, I don't know if Drake London makes it here, but if he does, he'd be a good pickup. And we got the Buffalo Bills taken. I believe it's Zion Johnson. Yep, Zion Johnson. Um, So a guy that could play either guard position. Uh, he worked under center, depending on what they want to do with Mitch Morris. Uh, yeah. That time could come sooner rather than later. Zion Johnson is just a nice piece. He's honestly one of my favorite picks for uh, the Bucks right now. So uh, we'll see if that uh, happens in my next mock draft. By the way, we'll be working on a seven-rounder after the combine wraps up. That will probably not be out this coming week, but the week after. And I think he double clips clicks here on accident. Yeah. So he takes Chris Olave to the Titans. They get a nice vertical threat. They need that. But Olave, he's much more than just that. He also brings in in terms of as a, as a route runner. I think he's going to be a good number two to A.J. Brown. Uh, yeah, they got Julio there. But like Olave is a guy that can work, inside, uh, work in the slot. Uh, as well as if Julio, you know, he's been often injured. So um, how much are you going to get from him? Really? And then John Dotson had a good testing day. Uh, this was a double click again by Bengal, but he was like, you know what? This makes sense because uh, they don't really have a separator there on the roster at receiver with Chris Godwin going to free agency. Uh, AB already, ta-ta, bye-bye. So John Dotson, very explosive route runner, good ball skills. I like the pick. And then for Green Bay... He goes, Boye Mafe. Boye Mafe, man. Listen up, everyone. This guy is going to have a great combine. Uh, I've already kind of featured him at the back end of the first round. He's got great traits. Like, sounds like they're trying to restructure Preston Smith, but maybe Zadarius ends up being the guy they let go because they got to make room for if they're going to bring back Aaron Rodgers and try to franchise uh, Devontae Adams, so this pick makes sense to me. And then I forgot what he did for the Dolphins. No, oh, I'm sure that sounded great in the mic. What do you do for the Dolphins? Okay, he goes Andrew Booth. I guess, I mean... Sure, why not? <laughs> I mean, the Dolphins are in a tough position where it's like, I'd love to get a receiver there. Uh, Bernard Ryman, I think, would be a fine pick, too, just because he's good. He'd fit well with the scheme. We don't really have a tackle on roster. Uh, Liam Eikenberg, I see more as a guard. Maybe, at best, right tackle. But uh, Andrew Booth comes in like Noah a big Nagani, uh Hasn't really developed like they thought he would. Uh, X is 
always unsatisfied with his contract, so eh, might not be a bad, bad pick. Let's see what the Chiefs do. Oh, yeah, I hated this one, I remember. He goes uh, Logan Hall to the Chiefs. I don't think Logan Hall is a first-rounder. I have a hard time putting him as even a top 50 player. Like, he's a tweener at his size. I think he ends up actually being an edge. Just, he's going to have to put on weight. And he's just not twitchy enough. Or not that he's not twitchy enough. He's not strong enough to play, uh, I think, continually on the interior. So, I'm just, I don't like the pick. I'm not in love with the pick. A lot of people like Logan Hall because he's a tweener. But, uh, I don't know, man. I'm just not a fan. I'm not a fan. Uh, Cincinnati Bengals. They go Tyler Smith, the guy who actually measured out very nice. I think he's going to look good here at the Combine. I thought it was – he could maybe sneak into the first round. I think it was tough for him not having a senior bowl. He's a young guy. I thought he might wait, come back to Tulsa, play one more year, get that senior bowl, and really, really elevate his draft stock. But maybe, maybe he sneaks into the first round, man. Maybe. Bengals, they need some help. And then I think he finishes it with Nicobe Dean here to Detroit. He does. Uh, Nicobe Dean falls. I don't think he's testing out here at the Combine. There are some questions when it comes to his, um, uh, obviously his size, but now his athleticism. Some teams just think he's more of this uh, guy that sees the field extremely well. He is quite literally, as you would say in Rocket League, a ball chaser. This guy tracks the ball very well. He's always around the football. Be a great pickup for the Lions. Overall, this solid mock. I didn't love Andrew Booth to the Dolphins, but I kind of understand given the predicament. Logan Hall, I thought, was kind of a wash pick. Not to say he's a bad prospect. It's just it's kind of hard to anticipate where he may go. Uh, but let me know what you think in the comment section below. That's it for the video. Go ahead and do the YouTube thing. And as always, until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.